uh, because if you don't flaunt it, who's going to know you're homosexual or, or not, you see? What they wanted to do was to flaunt it and uh, to not lose their jobs because of it. If we were going to go on a crusade across the nation and try to do away with the homosexuals, uh, then we certainly would have done it on June the 8th after one of the most overwhelming victories in the country. Um, uh, but we didn't. We, we, we tried to avoid it and went into a place called Norfolk, Virginia, and were met with protest and uh, um, all kinds of problems. And uh, uh, every... Oh, oh, oh. Security agent, security agent. No, no, let, let him stay. No. Let him stay. Well, at least it's a fruit pie. Huh. Let's well, pray. Chicago, Chicago, that toddling town. What's a Florida girl doing here in the heart of the Midwest? Reminding you that 100% orange juice from Florida puts a little bit of sunshine into every day, even where the sun doesn't always shine. It was 40 years ago, on June 16, 1977, that over 8,000 gay and straight marchers took the streets of downtown Houston to protest the visit of former beauty queen, the face of Florida Orange Juice, and the anti-gay crusader Anita Bryant. She was to perform at the Texas State Bar Association's annual convention at the Hyatt Regency Hotel. Not only did this make front-page news in Houston, it was also covered by NBC News National Radio, the New York Times, United Press International, The Advocate, among others. I now interview some of the men that were at that rally and share their experience during that time. This all happened in June 2017 at the Eagle in Montrose. And I'm here at the Eagle Bar in Hyde Park in Montrose. And if you could give me your name, please. My name is Patrick Hernandez. Tom Crow. Okay, so uh, we're here to celebrate the 40-year rally march against the visit of Anita Bryant to Houston on June 16, 1977. So tell us about that historic moment and what you remember from it. Well, I was 18 years old, fresh out of high school. Um, I heard about it through friends and four other friends and myself drove down to uh, downtown Houston and uh, we got together with the crowd that was assembling and ended up marching that night and I was um, sort of afraid at first but as the night wore on and we kept on marching and people kept on chanting things um, I just felt a, a sense of self-empowerment and uh, I just felt a whole lot better and I've just been politically active ever since. Right, and, and so a, a lot of publications have mentioned this being the Houston Stonewall, or the Houston version of Stonewall. So tell us about your experiences back at that time. Well, I was 35 at the time. Uh, I'd been out of the closet for a long time and worked in a hair salon where all of us showed up for this march because we were very uh, politically active at that point. And that was the beginning, actually, of my activity uh, or becoming an activist and have been one ever since and quite proud of what we've accomplished in 40 years. It's pretty amazing. And so now that we celebrate the 40-year anniversary of that event, what do you hope to see now in 2017 as far as like with Pride approaching us um, right around the corner? Well, I still hope that there's more acceptance of the gay, uh, lesbian, transgender community. I think um, we, years ago, 40 years ago, the seeds were planted and they're coming to fruition. And I think there's even more to look forward to as far as acceptance from the broader community and especially within the state of Texas and, and nationwide. Um, it's amazing what's happened in uh, 40 years. I grew up in the 50s and 60s where being gay was worse than anything. But um, it's come a long way, and I think it's going to go a long way. Uh, the more people come out of the closet, the more people are open about who they are, accepting who they are, and having acceptance from family, friends, it, it makes a huge difference. Words to live by. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. Thank you so much. And 
and I'm here at Eagle Houston in Montrose at Hyde Park. So if you could tell us your name and where you were at June 16th, 1977. My name is Frank Parsley and I was at the march uh, against Anita Bryant and uh, that was the depository and um, uh, it was wonderful. All, uh, they told us then there were 6,000 uh, and I know that there were so many people, they split us into two groups and we marched down each, well, a block apart um, so that we were on both sides of the, uh, the Hyatt Regency. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was wonderful. And it was this, really the start, uh, the kickoff to gay rights in Houston. Right, absolutely. And I read in a local publication that they consider it the Houston's version of Stonewall. Now, prior to this happening, what was the environment like in Houston as far as like for the LGBT community? Well, it, you know, I never really had any problems. I came out in Houston in 19, well, not, I didn't come out. I've always been gay. But I came, I went to my first gay bar in 1963. And not that I'm keeping track, but it was, um, on a Friday, on November the 8th, about 10 o'clock. <laughs> it was two days after my birthday. And uh, I had a friend that said there were some places that he thought I would like to see. And I went to the, um, the stadium lounge on Times in the village and to the off Main, which is, became the exile uh, on Bell Street, I think right off of Main Street between Main and Fannin, and a bar called Numbers, which is where the little burger place is there on California, and it was called Numbers, and it was whatever, California Street. And um, I liked the stadium lounge, and it was fun. They had a little combo, and it was really wonderful. Um, police didn't bother that much, but um, I wasn't afraid of them. And as a matter of fact, when ever so often the police would come in, and they just kind of look around, and if I didn't have a beer, I went and got one because I knew I was legal and I wasn't drunk. <laughs> so I, uh, but you know, it was, um, uh, there were problems with the police at times. I remember when Kathy Whitmire was elected, uh, they followed her. She went around to all the bars and thanked everybody and they went around to all the bars and uh, basically arrested a few people. And, um, but it was, um, I don't know, I never seemed to be bothered by them. I didn't pay much attention to the police. And um, I, I let things just, I don't know, I was looking for love all the time. <laughs> but I did go to the, the uh, Anita Bryant march. That was, that was important. Uh, absolutely. So um, in comparison now, we're in 2017 celebrating the 40 years since the rally march against Anita Bryant. What would you like to see in 2017 as far as like progress? Well, we've made so much progress. It's... Um, I wish that, that the gay community would get out and vote. I work the elections. I work early voting and I work election day in uh, Precinct 34, which is Lower Montrose, the, the gayest precinct in Houston. And um, it's um, that people just don't get out and vote. We have enough people that we can pretty much control any election. When you've got that many people, if everybody votes. The Hispanic community, community is the same way. But the people just don't go out and vote. And uh, I, I, uh, I think that would be a really important thing. And I'm here at Eagle Bar in Hyde Park in Montrose. And if you could tell us your name, please. My name's Gregory Mark Shelton. And I was there at 1977 at uh, Anita Bryant March. And I heard about that. I had just graduated from college. I heard about that in MCCR, Metropolitan Community Church of the Resurrection, where I was a original member. And Ray Hill was a uh, a rabble rouser. <laughs> uh, he got as many people as could come to this march. We heard about it, and uh, my partner Steve Brown was there as well. And it was amazing in a number of ways. First of all, we had a pink triangle uh, armbands. This is not one of them, it's a replica. But uh, this was from the Holocaust, a pink triangle of the gay men that were killed by the Nazis, incinerated in concentration camps. And the, the motto of the Holocaust was never again. 
and we had all gone through so many horror stories in all of our lives that we saw never again. So that's one thing. The second thing, um, kind of like gay people at that time doing anything together was like herding cats. And this was the first time anybody actually organized us. We were organized going down the streets. Uh, we didn't violate any laws when we did that. And uh, oh, that was a miracle in it and of itself and you know Ray and all the others were so encouraged about this that they immediately started making plans for other events and so this is a kickstart of everything that happened in Houston afterwards. And so uh, a lot of publications locally have mentioned how empowering that moment was in 1977. What changes do you hope to see in 2017? Oh I want a continuation of never again and when people get in your face, I think we should get in their face back. <clears throat> I'm an old man, but still I think I'm going to continue uh, that attitude. There's so many things that are truly awful, and you have to draw a line. It's our people, and we take care of our people. Very wise words. Thank you very much for the interview. And thank you very much. I'm here at Eagle Bar in Hyde Park in Houston, Texas, in Montrose. And could you tell us your name and where you were at June 16th, 1977? I'm Larry Bonarese, according to Houston, Larry Bagneris in New Orleans. I'm head of the New Orleans Human Relations Commission, and I'm here for the event, the 40th anniversary of the March for Anita Bryan against Anita Bryan. And on that particular evening, I was in the march. And what is your recollection of being here in Houston in that environment on June 16, 1977? It was unbelievable because the energy in the crowd, once you stepped into that crowd, number one, you didn't believe the number of people that were there. I mean, I expected to have a, a dozen or so people. There were 10, 12,000 people out there, and we were confined to the sidewalks at first. And then we started screaming, to the street, to the streets. We took the street, and when we finally got to the Hyatt, they stuck a microphone in my mouth, and they said, what do you feel like? And I was so energized against the bigotry of Anita Bryan that I just wanted wanted to come out of my skin and come out and the next weekend I went home to my parents and came out. Wow, all that happened within that, that, that time week. frame. Yes, it happened because of the energy that was drawn from the crowd. And you know, everybody talks about Anita Bryan, but if it wasn't for her, we wouldn't have come out of the closet years ago, 40 years ago, and been able to speak our, our language and be able to build a community. And it's, it's amazing you mentioned that because in the local publication, it mentioned had it not been for that one event, it wouldn't have brought us our very first openly gay mayor in Houston, uh, Anise Parker. That's correct. Right. And the fact is that uh, Ray doesn't take credit, but Ray was pushing and shoving and always in your face. As a matter of fact, one time I went up to him and said, look, you're doing this all wrong. And he said, well, show me how to do it. And that's how I formed the first gay pride parade in Houston in 1979 and stayed with it for until 1986 because I wanted to celebrate being gay. I'm from New Orleans, so we threw beads. We had a good time. And 20,000 people showed up for the first gay pride parade along with Timer. When you see those kind of numbers, you think about the gay community being in a closet 40 years ago, you don't believe you have that many family and friends around. Yeah, and it unifies and brings everybody together. That's correct. And it also empowers you to feel like there's nothing wrong with your lifestyle. You've got to come out and tell your parents. You've got to tell your friends so that you can protect your job, your place of employment, the way you work, and so that people will respect you for who you are. What I do in my bedroom is nobody's business. What I do in my job might be your business, but in my bedroom it's mine. So we are celebrating the 40th anniversary of the kickstarting of the gay, lesbian, transgender movement in this city. The event was enormous. Larry, you remember what you said on this. And, and other people here, uh, Tom just left, Tom is, uh, there he is, Tom's here, Tom is 
is a non-gay Montrovian who walked from his house to join the march and, and, and didn't bring his car because he couldn't get it out of the driveway because somebody had illegally parked in front of it. And, and, and that's how it was that night. And he walked the and he walked from his house over here today. And I want you to know that, yes, I played a role in the evolution of the movement. Larry probably overstated that a while ago. And I may not, I certainly wasn't solely responsible because there was a lot of other people involved too. I've survived most of it. And so I get to write the script. And hon, let me tell you, if you get to write the script, you have every right to be the hero. <laughs> I love you all for coming tonight. This has been, in my mind, a successful event because you came and you contributed. The night of actually June the 16th is the actual anniversary, but you don't ask a borrow for their Friday night. <laughs> so we're going to celebrate on the 14th. And he's been very generous. Mark has supplied not only his staff and uh, everything, but uh, Mark also owns Hamburg and Mary's, who did the catering. Uh, and I thought rather well, I could keep grazing, but I weighed too much already. Uh, and uh, I want to thank you all. I want to thank Mark. Uh, uh, thank you, Larry, for bringing your display. Uh, the clips in the screen are from J.D. Doyle. Raise your hand, J.D. There's J.D. back there. If you haven't done it, Thank you for watching Houston Refocused and the coverage of the 40th anniversary rally march against Anita Bryant's visit to Houston. I'm Roger Palomino. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.